Get ready to travel back to the past, because in this week's manga chapter of One Piece, Big Mom has officially flipped her shit. She is in a massive torrent of misery, anger, and pain. And that's because her treasured photo of Mother Caramel has been destroyed by the Straw Hat Pirates. And at the very end of this week's chapter, it looks like we're finally going to delve into her backstory, her relationship with Mother Caramel, and how it all seems to tie into the kingdom of Elbath otherwise known as the strongest country in the One Piece world, which is inhabited by the super powerful giants. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's all come down to this moment, what Luffy and Capone have been waiting for, that one small moment where Big Mom is going to be weakened. We even get to see it come to fruition in this chapter when she falls to her knees and she suddenly starts to draw blood, and she's just in a complete state of pure panic and misery as she's trying to figure out what's going on here and it looks like she's about to get a face full of rocket launcher poison gas thanks to of course Capone. With that being said, not really that much happened in this week's chapter. Basically, just more chaos, Big Mom finally screaming and knocking out everyone around her, and most of the chapter was dedicated to Sanji desperately trying to get back to his family, which is not only chivalrous and badass, but makes for some really great drama in this week's chapter. But we also got a great scene of Katakuri, who is desperately doing everything in his power to stop Luffy and his friends from showing his mother the picture picture of Mother Caramel, and getting to see more of his devil fruit in action is always something that I can appreciate, especially considering that Katakori has pretty much the biggest bounty that we have seen in the series. The problem is he is going up against some of the most powerful pirates and characters in the show, and I love the one scene where he's desperately trying to stop Luffy, and you have characters like Pedro and Jinbei who are getting involved in the fight, desperately trying to stop him, even Capone who's shooting at him at point blank range, you get to see all of his bullets are just going through him because he's a Logia type. He just barely manages to stretch his body away from Jinbei's big attacks. Pedro can't really seem to do anything to this guy, and even when he pins down Luffy, Luffy is able to use his Gumu Gumu abilities to raise up the picture right in front of Big Mom's face, which pretty much starts all of the crazy knockouts in this week's chapter. And like I said, going back to the whole Sanji thing, I really love this, and it's also a case of just villains monologuing. Katakori is telling his brother, Pero Sparrow, Kill those guys! Shoot them right now! This is our only chance. And what does Perospero do? He just starts talking about how he has the ability to see into the future as well and starts monologuing like a freaking classic Batman villain. Why doesn't he just shoot these guys? He has, they have the guns, they have the powers, they could do it right now and everything would be done. And they even know that Sanji's coming for them who is still fighting against Daifuku and his giant uh, freaking genie which manages to pin him down in a scene yet he still manages to fight forward. And there's a great scene where Sanji actually manages to make it right next to his face Family. He's standing on top of this massive table, looking super triumphant and badass. Chopper has managed to break through the mirror and make his way into the scene as well. You have Nami and Carrot who are getting ready to enter the battlefield, and Caesar Clown with his big gassy ass tucked between his legs. So what's the rundown on this week's chapter of One Piece? That's pretty much the chapter right there in a nutshell. Big Mom freaks out, we segue into a flashback, which could mean a number of different things. A lot of the times in the One Piece series, a flashback is basically your very first flag for a character being defeated. However, I don't really see it going that way. In fact, I really don't even think we've seen Big Mom go all out quite yet. In fact, we haven't really seen her do much of anything, but I really am going to be appreciating this backstory as it's finally going to tie into her obsession with the Elbath Giants, why she's just so obsessed with actually bringing them into the fold. And a lot of people have had some wild theories like Big Mom actually being a giant herself, which does actually make a little bit of sense. She is much larger than the normal human, although that is kind of hard to tell in the One Piece series when everybody is so wildly disproportionate all the time, period. But the fact that she apparently was on this island and somehow either abandoned or was left there by Mother Caramel just raises so many questions. We also get another good look at Mother in this week's chapter, where we get to see her from behind, and just like her photo would imply, she seems to be some sort of nun. She seems to have some sort 
sort of religious creed, and I can't wait to see how that's going to tie into Big Mom's story, whether it was something that influenced her to become the way she is, or something that actually leaves her really freaking pissed off and she just can't seem to get over the notion of her mother leaving her, is definitely going to think going to be one of the biggest aspects of this arc right here. And I know a lot of people are going to be slightly disappointed that we are moving into a flashback right before we get to this crazy action, but I want to know a little bit more about Big Mom, her story, why she considers this Mother Caramel to be so important to her. I think it's going to be very important to turning her into just sort of like this stereotypical monster and turning her into a character that I think that we can all really care about. Really though, that's all I have to say about this chapter. It was an exciting read, but basically it's just a segue into the next big part of the story, which is all Big Mom's backstory, and because it is very important, we're going to be on break next week, which is just... You know, that always happens when something really cool is about to happen. Uh, but still, I like it, because it's going to get a lot of people talking, everybody's going to be coming up with their theories, and uh, I can't wait to hear all of yours. And most importantly, that's where I want to hear from you guys. But before we get there, let me just give you my score for this week's chapter. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. Despite the fact that not a lot this week actually happened, there was a lot of great imagery in this chapter. I loved all of the scenes of Katakori going on his rampage, trying to desperately stop Luffy and his crew. Capone was just awesome in this chapter, totally living up to his gangster designs by shooting uh, at Katakori and basically letting him and the Big Mom crew know that, look, I'm basically going to betray all of you guys. Get ready for a lot of explosive shit. And, of course, I loved all of the action in this chapter. Big Mom freaking out was great. Sanji was especially cool when he ran up to his family, who don't seem to give a crap about them. And uh, just the build-up is what I loved about this one. It was a little slow, and yes, I wanted a little more to happen. And hell, I would have even liked to see a little bit more of the Elbath Kingdom and a little bit of the backstory. But I know that's going to be coming in droves in the coming weeks. So that's definitely a reason to get excited. So I'm going to give this chapter right here a 4 out of 5. A solid read and definitely something that all One Piece fans need to check out. But I want to hear from you guys. What are your theories about Big Mom's connection to Mother Caramel in the Kingdom of Elbath? Why is it all going to start there? Is Big Mom actually a giant herself? Or did something even crazier happen in her past? We have to remember, we're going to be going very far into the past. We haven't gone this far before. 63 years. That's going to be a very long time, so I can't wait to see what's going to happen. Make sure to tell me your theories and what you hope to see in the coming weeks in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching this review. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for all things One Piece anime and manga related. Make sure to leave me a comment telling me what you thought about this week's chapter. If you have any questions for me personally, I'm always down for a good conversation. And of course, if you liked this review, one of the best ways to support our channel, of course, is to give it a like. But if you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, stay dandy, baby.